Cyber attackers are getting more persistent and more active despite our best efforts. Just in 2019, more than 8.5 billion records were compromised, resulting in a 200% increase in exposed data reported year over year. Now, IBM just concluded its 2020 Threat Intelligence Index Report, which is based on IBM's analysis of 70 billion security events across 130 countries. So very comprehensive. And with me to explain the findings, Wendy Whitmore, the Vice President, IBM X4 threat intelligence, which may be the coolest title ever. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. So kind of give me an overview of what IBM found out with this comprehensive report. Yeah, this year's report was pretty interesting. So we found a couple new things. In particular, year after year, we've seen spear phishing be the number one way that attackers get into a network. Explain through spear right? phishing. Yeah, so what that means is that you might receive a suspicious email or an email that doesn't look suspicious at all. It has a link, you click it, and unfortunately it opens an avenue for the attackers to get in in your environment. And then they'll pick that and they'll move throughout the rest of the company um, all the while looking for a data that they can steal. Okay. So year after year, that has been the number one way attackers get in. This year, what was pretty staggering is that that stat went down to 30%. So only 30% of the way attackers initially get in is through spear phishing. 60% is through leveraging known data that's already out there. Oh. So what that's made up of is passwords that have already been stolen, user credentials that have already been stolen in previous attacks, whether it was last year, six months ago, two or three years ago, or um, leveraging exploits to known vulnerabilities. So meaning systems that aren't patched with vulnerabilities that have occurred again over the last couple of years. And so um, the reality that that's making up 60% of the way in to create an attack is pretty staggering. What that also means though, is that you might say, well, okay, these passwords were stolen previously and these credentials were taken previously. Why is that relevant now? The reality is people are still reusing their passwords okay. over and over, and they'll actually use them for you know, your Amazon site, okay. your Google um, site, and will continually reuse them without changing them. So that was what I was going to ask. Is just simply changing a password? Is it simple as that? Or is that the number one thing you would say that people should do? Change the password. For frequently. consumers, yeah, I would okay. say two things. First, do not reuse your passwords everywhere. Do not reuse the same one, right? Have a password manager, so something like um, an encryption tool, which is free, that you can have on your mobile device or on your laptop, and it essentially will sync your password. So it will allow you to have really strong passwords. You don't have to memorize them. You just have to memorize one okay. to get into that device. The second would be two-factor authentication. So for your um, financial, you know, you're logging into your bank, for your email account, for your social media accounts, log in with a second factor of authentication, whether it's a you know, face scan, a biometric like your fingerprint, or a, a token. In Any of those are going to make it so that you're more secure and less likely to be compromised. Now, why have we not used more biometric uh, passwords? Uh, you know, our eyes or a thumb or... I mean, something? those are coming online now in so many ways. So most applications, you can do that. Certainly with any of the new phones, you can do that. With many of the new laptops, you can do that as well. Previously, it just wasn't as widespread, and so that wasn't something that you could do. But now, most every application that you can log into will allow you to have a second factor, and it's not a nice to have. It's really a critical to sure. have now. Um, now. Finance is the most targeted industry, right? And retail, yep. we hear about this, but really every industry is impacted. Yeah, so you know, retail kind of fell off the map a little bit for the last few years, and now it's back as the number two attacked organization or industry, um, very close to finance this year. And so what we're seeing is with the widespread usage of e-commerce, um, again, you're really looking at a financial ecosystem that's being attacked there and targeted with the intent of you know stealing card data that can then be monetized on the dark web. Mm -hmm. One thing that fascinates me is I know like even like a Google has been the victim of an attack. And Facebook, like they will get an invoice or something from something that looks legitimate and they'll wire the money and, you know, they've lost right. it. So, I mean, just amazed that even these companies like a Google would be fooled by some of this stuff. It's still a difficult problem, I think, to, to address. I think um, on the note, when you talk about these companies, right, that are trusted, so one thing that consumers um, really need to think about is that we actually saw, so going back to that spear phishing topic, right, and receiving emails um, that look completely, um, you know, mundane and innocuous, right? These emails are coming now from organizations that look like they're from Google, that look like they're from YouTube, organizations where we all have accounts with, and ultimately are 
are being spoofed because we trust those brands. Right, so I right. um, really want to make sure users are aware that they should be thinking about, should I be receiving an email from Google or Facebook or an account of a brand I trust? Or you yeah. know, do they not have a reason to contact well, and me? Always look at the email that it came from. Because um, there's some, you know, you can tell right there that it's not from the legitimate source because it's some weird, you know, email that doesn't say right. Google in it at all or right. whatever. So, yeah. I mean, are we even close to kind of <laughs> getting a handle on this? Or, I mean, what would be the solutions, would you see? You know, I, I think this will continue to be a problem, right? Attacks will continue to be a problem. And what we always advise our clients on is that it's really about limiting the impact of a breach. Um, and that's the win, right? It's not that organizations or people will not ever get attacked, right? You will have more passwords stolen, I promise you that, right? We'll see more breaches that occur. But if we can really limit the damage that's done um, by finding and identifying the attack quickly and by doing some of the things we talked about today, right, in terms of making sure that you've got two-factor authentication and that you're changing your passwords, they're secure, um, that will really limit the personal impact that you okay. feel from a breach. Well, thank right? you so much, Wendy. You're welcome. Great advice. Thank you, Jane. And thank you as well for joining us. We'll be right back.